I'm seeing my toe starting to get a little bit racked, so I'm gonna tighten it up, push it down a bit there. Just a light bit of hemi. Real light there, Lloyd. A little heavier. Nice. We've already got some depth and the shoe's real hot, so there's no need for my striker to kill it. That's about where I want to be. Now, are these Heinz seven nails or eight? Okay. I'll just do a little ironing out. The difference between a, a really nicely forged, eye appealing horseshoe that's flat, not got hammer marks, and one that's real choppy and inconsistent and dented up and has hammer marks is, is overlapping blows. I want to take I want to take as many blows as I can from here to there, so that they all overlap and they all just smooth that metal out to where it looks like it was just pressed out with an iron. And I'm picking up on my tongs. If I push down, it's going to jump and it's going to get choppy. So I'm just ever so slightly picking up on my tongs. Right now, I'm looking at the outside edge of the steel, ironing it out. Now I'll look at the inside edge and iron it out. I'm going to clip this the next heat before I do my, my finishing touches on my punching and pritchelling. So I'm just using my calipers to double check that that mark's in the center. It's good. I can trust it. I'm going to start my drawing up on the horn. Now you see that dent that the horn's created? I'm going to set that right on the edge of the anvil, and I'm going to forge from that dent out right to my heel cock and then stop. I'm going to compensate for my tendency to hit harder on the right side by 180-ing it. Now my striker and I are going to come from the heel with overlapping blows, nice and flat. Good. I don't know. <laughs> That's a great one. Is that what it is? Yeah. I go a little under that. Oh well, I got a lot more to go. That's the inside, right? Yeah. Is that supposed to be seven and three quarter hooter? quite a bit of forging though after I turn my branch. 
I'm almost seven and a half, so that'll be good. Getting rid of my soul pressure. Find my mark. I'm not hanging anything over, I'm just hitting my mark. As that bubble, as that little uh, bubble starts to protrude forward, I'll let that hang over the anvil. But none of my toes hanging over, just the clip. using the side of my hammer, staying at the base. By using the side of my hammer, I'm making my hammer into a cross peen. I'm watching my hammer marks, working my way out to the tip, but I haven't hit the tip yet. Now I'll go ahead and forge the tip out. It's not a real tall clip. Like I said before, I'm not really into tall clips. I'm into nice wide thick clips. The base, is, the base is where the strength comes from. Now let's clean up the sides. Before I set the clip, I'm gonna hammer in right behind it. Just to make sure I don't have any pressure. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of flatters, so I don't hardly ever use them. I try and turn my hammer into a flatter on a stick. Hammer control. Good ironing out is better than flattening with a flatter because you're actually forging and moving the metal where you want. All right, like I said, it's not a huge clip height-wise, but it's got a lot of width and it's got a lot of thickness at the base. And look how little material I actually got into the web. By not hanging over, you didn't drag that toe down. Yeah, I didn't rocker the toe or anything. I've barely taken anything out of there. I've got an inch of flat surface from the center of the clip to the inside web. If I use my ball peen, by the time I get in there, I might only have three quarters of an inch of flat surface left for wear. That's, that's preparing to go green. I could reset this shoe maybe. I'm gonna start the outside just like I did the inside. I'm gonna let the horn forge the inside of my web. Got my dent. Everybody see the dent? I'm gonna set that on the anvil right to where the dent is just on there. Now I'm gonna run down the outside edge, being careful not to pinch up my heel cock. Now I'll run down the inside edge to true my section. Now me and Striker Man will iron it out. Hit in the middle, Lloyd. All right, now I'll just clean it up. looking at the inside edge this run. The next run I'm going to look at the outside edge. That's seven and three quarters, so that's good. But this is my cleanup heat. I'm gonna come out, do a little shaping, run my lines, re-fuller, re-punch, flatten, and then I'm gonna go the foot. I'm gonna check my fit, and I'm gonna get my clip burned in in the center of the foot, and hopefully the outside is gonna fit at that point, because I'm gonna try and shape it like the foot I remember. So if it fits, then I'm gonna start paying attention to the inside that I still have to do my cleanup heat on. So I'm gonna see what needs to be changed shape-wise. When I come back, get my inside cleanup heat, I'm gonna make the necessary adjustments to fit that foot. But I'm gonna do the same forging process. I'm gonna run my edges, 
I'm going to reham a little bit. I'm going to flatten. I'm going to fuller punch and pritchel. And then I'm going to go back to the foot. That'll be my second fitting heat. And if everything went well, it's going to fit. No big overall heat, shaping both sides all at the same time. It's forging to fit. My toe's gotten round. Like I said, I made a really tight toe. Everything I do is going to open that toe up. I'm going to come in here and tighten it back up. I'm going to run my edges. Enhance my shape while running my edges. Skip across my quarter to the bending side. Brush it again now that I've loosened all that flag. And Lloyd and I are going to iron it out. Now I'm going that last third of the depth. Go ahead here. You'll just hold that so I can pritch that toenail. Just pick up on it. Yep. Yep. Scoot me just a bit more forward. All right, that's good. I have a specific Pritchell for my draft shoes. It's a lot bigger than a, a Pritchell you'd use for an MX-50 or something. It's an E10 Pritchell. It'll fit an E10, E12, E9, E14. Same thing with my punch. That's a specific punch. It's got a larger cutting edge. Like I said before, I only want a Pritchell once. I don't want to spend... If I, if I Pritchelled right off the bat, as soon as I forged that or fullered that branch, Every time I did a cleanup heat or changed my shape, I'd need to re -pritchel. When you've got seven nails in a shoe, if you got to pritchel it three times, that's 27 pritchel instead of seven, or 21 pritchel, yeah. Every time you gotta do it, it just keeps multiplying. That takes time, believe it or not. Pritcheling it once saves time.